Hello there, it's Moira McDonald. Um, I'm going to try and do a wee quick tutorial on how to make a policy envelope. Uh, I yesterday had been looking to make one myself and I honestly thought I was going to have to buy logarithm tables uh, and a set square. <sighs> Something that should be relatively simple appears to be beyond our normal scope without 400 tonnes of explanations. Anyway, the gist of it all is I made my first go, which isn't 100% wonderful, but it's it's okay. You know, it certainly it put me in the situation where I knew what I was doing. So, um, I'll leave a link to the tutorial that I thought was the best. Uh, she's quite good, the girl, in terms of giving you the size of the basic envelope. Unfortunately, she didn't put the wee... Um, the wee circles on, so I had to look for somebody else for information on that and I found someone that seriously, I've never seen anything so complex looking in my life for two wee circles and a, a wee um, eyelet in the middle of them. But there you go, that's just the way it is. Right, so um, I'm, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well because I, I used a gold gel pen. Uh, you know, can't, can't possibly use a normal pen in our house. Right, the paper size I'm going to use for doing this is 11 by 8.5 because that's what the girl that made the envelope used. Um, on the 11 inch side, or oh, the other thing to remember is if you're using directional paper, for instance, if you used that side to be the front and back of your envelope, you probably would want the uh, strips going up and down. So you've got to bear that in mind when you're determining. This will be, since it's the 11 inch side, this will be the the direction if you know what I mean that's going to be the long side there okay um, you score it at three inches and eight inches when it's coming to the eight and a half inch side you'll score that at one inch and seven and a half inch or one inch turn it round and do one inch on the other side basically one inch either end of the short sides okay so let's get to it Obviously, you will need a scoring board of some description, probably, to, to help you out with this. Oh. Um, which scoring board is completely irrelevant? Right, so we've got the 11 inch side here, so I want to score it at 3 inches. Wait a minute, that moved. Oh, for heaven's sake. I'm all over the place here. I'm going to turn that the other way around because I think I'll find it easier to see it on that side. Three inches and eight inches. And the other thing I noticed yesterday was I first tried to do this with a sheet of um, K and Company paper and calling it paper is quite accurate because that's what it is. It's very, very thin and it doesn't score at all. It just rips. Right, so we're scoring that at an inch. And we're scoring at this other end at an inch. Or if I was doing it properly, I would have done that at seven and a half inches. And so let's now fold all these down to make sure they're well done. So when it's made up, you just fold these over just now. That's how it will look from the front. Okay. Right, so we don't need the scoring board again. I can put that way out of the way and we can get working on this. Right, the next thing is the cutting. The cutting of the bits that we won't be needing. Basically what you don't need is... these bits down the bottom and the same up the top.
sorry I'm being dead quiet when I'm doing this but I find it difficult to concentrate and do things at one time right there we go so I'll fold over like that that should shut up like that and that will come down like that now the one thing I would say is what makes life so much easier is if you trim things just a little bit and at this point you can eyeball it to do it because it's just so much easier than sitting trying to calculate it all so you'll want to cut these in that way these wee bits that are going to be at the end I mean obviously you can do it to a high degree of accuracy cut one and use it the template to cut the other but I'm not that fussed at this stage so you do that at that end and you do exactly the same at the other end and you may hear a faint little yapping in the background because there's clearly a great deal of puppy carry on going on because I've shut the door over but we shall ignore that right so that's fine that's organised that way what you will find is you won't get a it, it won't fold over properly and easily unless you trim these in some fashion as well because it's just it would be too bulky now you don't need to take a phenomenal amount of this what you're trying to aim for is you just pick an angle roughly and cut towards where the uh, fold line is and you do that in both sides wait a minute hold on I'm not very good at this it doesn't need to be all measured out just use your uh, your judgement because I'm sure you're all more than capable of doing that if I can do it you can do it all you need to take is the least wee bit obviously try and get it relatively straight if you can and that's us Right, so we don't need the wee bits anymore. So our envelope will now, once we've put our tape or whatever on, will close as such. Now the next bit is obviously putting on the wee circles. What I would suggest you do, I've got a one inch hole punch, which looks pretty grim because I managed to stick something to it at one point. You'll need four wee holes or oh, four wee circles should I say and the reason I'm saying four is because if you join two together like that it just makes it that wee bit stronger so um, four wee circles wee bit of glue don't need a ton of glue just need enough to try and get these to stick together my glue's nearly done by the way try and avoid the centre if you can because you're going to be putting your eyelet through that Right, that's one done. And another done. I just cut them from another piece of scrapbooking paper. And of course the problem is when you're gluing at the edges you get glue all over your fingers right so that's the glue done don't need that anymore that's a wee bit of paper that can get moved out of the way now in terms of the string i would recommend using something relatively fine but not so fine that it will snap i'm going to use embossing no embossing what am i saying um embroidery thread cut 20 centimeters roughly 20 centimetres should give you more than enough to do what you want to do here. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to make the hole in the centre for our eyelet. Now, I could use the crocodile to do this, but I personally found it easier using my other wee hole punch because you want to try and get it as near as you can in the centre. Uh, the girl I saw doing this sat with a wee measuring tape and everything to work out exactly where the centre was and I thought that's a wee bit too much hassle for me I can't be bothered with all that uh, I must admit I do 
I don't mind working at crafting, but I don't want to spend my entire day working things out um, before I can actually play with a bit of paper. Right, so when I'm putting that in, I can see my wee hole there, which is why I prefer to use this. And I won't be, I dare say, oops, wee circles everywhere. I dare say I won't be uh, entirely accurate. There is a, a vague chance that I might be marginally off, but I shouldn't be that much. That it really is going to detract from it. My wee punch has seen better days. And I shall get the ones off the floor that are there. Now, we've also got to put a wee circle. This wee circle's got to fit on this. Oops. It's got to fit on this. And we do want to try and get it kind of central, if we can. Uh, so, with my trusty gold gel pen. Doesn't need to be a gold gel pen, remember? Just a pen that you can see, or a pencil. Uh, it's difficult to tell where the centre is. Right, I think that's it, give or take. And I'll just put a wee dot in the middle. And that's what I'm aiming for. So I'll put that in there and I shall punch my wee hole. That's it. Now what I shall do is I shall attach this. And at this point I do need to use my trusty crocodile. I was watching the, they've, they've got another thing, what is it, the, the Big Bite it's called, I think, and it does look, it looks a lot better. Um, the only problem is, obviously, it costs a lot more money, and there is a limit to what you want to spend when you're crafting. Right, now, see your thread, or your embroidery floss, or whatever it's called, what you want to do is feed it through your wee hole, because that way, when we're putting this in, and we're adding our eyelet, the eyelet should hopefully stick it in place so that it doesn't uh, come loose from this end. And once it's in that end, then we're, we're fine. Right, now bear with me here till I try and get this in. Hopefully that's us. Right, success. That's in place and you'll see that's pinned down there be the wee thing. Right, now, the next thing we need to determine is when we shut this over, one side obviously is going to have to have the wee thing on it. Um, the girl sat and measured all this out the other day and I thought, oh, way too much work I said to myself. Um, there's got to be an easier way, so I am just going to basically eyeball it again and using my trusty gel pen put a wee circle where I want the hole to be, take my wee punch, get my wee circle in the centre of that wee hole, punchy! Now what we do is we put that on with our little eyelet. And then crop, crop, crop. <clears throat> and that hopefully is that in position. Yep, it is. Right, crop a dial out of the way. Don't need that again. The next thing is the actual... Sorry, I'm just moving the, the old scoreboard. Or look at the old scoreboard. If you're British, you'll probably know what I was getting at there. Right, the next thing we want to do is we will need to put tape to hold our envelope shut. You can use wet glue if you want. I just want to use tape because personally I feel it is um, easier for me so that I don't stick it in the wrong place and I don't have glue oozing all roads. Put it as close to the edge as you can. We'll burnish over that in a minute. Now your bottom bit, when you go to stick that, I don't think it does any harm to stick a couple of bits on this, just to make sure it's definitely stuck. 
Um, so again, one kind of part way down but not right at the edge and one at the edge at the top because you don't want that coming off. Now I've got a wee, um, one of these wee kind of scoring tools here and I'll just use that to burnish down whoops, the tape to make sure it'll stick. And the first thing we want to do is we want to stick this, so we'll peel that off. We shall close that side over. Now my tape was a wee bit long on that side at the top. We'll close that over. And that's stuck. Now we'll do the bottom. And bring that up. On the shoulder to make sure that's stuck. There's your envelope opening. Close over your top and the theory is it should be able to go round and that's your policy envelope. And of course I've got a wee bit of fluff stuck to it because my table's never clean. Um, so that's us. Uh, it, it's not that difficult. Um, although when I was sitting watching the videos yesterday I thought, dear God, I can't do this. Now you'll notice mine's just not completely in the centre there. It's not the end of the world. Um, you can maybe, you won't be filming yourself doing it. So you can maybe use a wee bit more time to make sure you're precise. But that's your... Uh, policy envelope 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 policy envelope envelope that's your policy envelope made um, and ready for inclusion in your junk journals so thanks very much for your time i shall look forward to seeing you again soon and possibly um, do another tutorial of some description in the not too distant future but we'll see how that pans out so bye bye if there's any questions incidentally give me a shout um and I'll I'll try and resolve it. As I've said, I'll I'll put a link into the girl that made the envelope, and you can watch her because she was quite good. Uh, she unfortunately didn't do the circles, but um, and I won't bother leaving a link to that because that will just really confuse you and annoy you. Anyway, that's what it did to me. So thanks very much for your time. Um, thanks for all your uh, comments in the past and these proposed comments, um, and your support on my channel. I'm delighted to know you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.